formation of bone is called osteogenesis or ossification and begins during embryonic development. There are two types of osteogenesis that occur in the embryo. The first type is intramembranous ossification, and this is formation of bones without a cartilage model. Typical in flat bones of the skull, mandible, clavicle, and patella, and begins approximately eight weeks after fertilization. Mesochyme cells differentiate into osteoblasts within a fibrous connective tissue uh, model, and this type of ossification normally occurs in the deeper layers of the dermis or in the connective tissues of tendons. The other type is endochondral ossification, and this forms most bones of the body using a hyaline cartilage model and begins approximately six weeks after fertilization. Hyaline cartilage does not turn into bone, but is instead broken down as ossification occurs. The steps in intramembranous ossification are shown here. The first step is formation of a bone matrix within a fibrous membrane. Mesochymal cells cluster and secrete organic components of the matrix. The location of this activity is called the ossification center. The resulting osteoid mineralizes and the mesochyme cells differentiate into osteoblasts. As the ossification process proceeds, the osteoblasts get trapped within lacunae and differentiate into osteocytes. The next step is formation of woven bone in the periosteum. Osteoid accumulates, fuses together, forming struts called trabeculae, or spicules around blood vessels. The overall structure is similar to spongy bone. The next step is formation of the compact bone plate. Initially, the intramembranous bone consists of spongy bone only. Subsequent remodeling around trapped blood vessels can produce osteons typical of compact bone. As the growth slows at the surface, the connective tissue around the bone becomes organized into the fibrous layer of the periosteum. The other type of ossification process is endochondral ossification, and the steps are shown here. First, you have cavitation of a hyaline shaft. Chondrocytes within the shaft hypertrophy, or enlarge, as the surrounding matrix begins to calcify. The impermeable matrix causes chondrocytes to die from lack of nutrients, leaving the matrix that starts to deteriorate. Blood vessels grow around the edges of the cartilage, and the cells of the perichondrium convert to osteoblasts, forming a superficial layer of bone, sometimes called the bony collar. Next, there is invasion of internal cavities. Blood vessels penetrate the cartilage and invade the central region. This area within the shaft of hyaline cartilage is called the primary ossification center. Migrating with the blood vessels are fibroblasts, which differentiate into osteoblasts, lymph vessels, nerve fibers, red marrow elements, and collectively these are all called the periosteal bud. The osteoblasts then secrete osteoid around remaining fragments of hyaline, forming trabeculae or spongy bone. The next step in the process is the formation of the medullary cavity. As the primary ossification center enlarges, osteoclasts break down newly formed spongy bone, and this opens up a medullary cavity in the center of the diaphesis. The osseous tissue of the outer shaft then becomes thicker, forming compact bone. The last step is formation of the ends of the bone, and this is where a secondary ossification center appears in the area at the opposite ends of the bone. The cartilage in the epiphysis calcifies and deteriorates, 
forming cavities that allow entry of a peristeal bud. Soon, the epiphysis are filled with spongy bone. The spongy bone, however, is not broken down during the remodeling process as it was in the primary ossification center in the diaphysis or center of the bone. Now, the next topic is growth of bone. Growth of bone occurs by two primary processes as well. We have longitudinal growth, which gives length to bones, and appositional growth, which allows bones to grow in width or diameter. Let's first look at longitudinal growth. In longitudinal growth, hyaline cartilage cells form tall columns at the epiphyseal plate or growth plate and within the articular cartilage as shown in the diagram. The cells at the top of the stack divide quickly, forming what we call a zone of proliferation, increasing the thickness of the epiphyseal plates and causing the entire long bone to lengthen. Older chondrocytes closer to the shaft enlarge, and this area is called the zone of maturation and hypertrophy. The matrix surrounding the chondrocytes become calcified in the death of the chondrocytes, resulting in the death of the chondrocytes, and deterioration of the cartilage, and this zone is called the zone of calcification. Osteoblasts in the medullary cavity then ossify the cartilage spicules, forming spongy bone within what is known as the zone of ossification. The hyaline cartilage at the ends of the bone in the growth plate is eventually replaced entirely by bone. Once completely replaced with bone, the epiphyseal plate is now called the epiphyseal line. This typically occurs in a person's early 20s and as a result, the person stops growing in height. And here you can see that progression in the growth plate. The other type of bone remodeling is appositional growth, where bones grow in width or diameter. Osteoprogenitor cells beneath the periosteum differentiate into osteoblasts and form new osteons on the external bone surface. While bone is being added to the outer surface through appositional growth, osteoclasts are removing and recycling lamellae at the inner surface. As a result, the medullary cavity gradually enlarges as the bone increases in diameter or width. Appositional growth is important in increasing the diameter of existing bones but it does not form the original bone.